This molecule is S3-chlorocyclohexene. S3-chlorocyclohexene. Try drawing that molecule. I hope that you paused the video and gave that a shot. It's cyclo, so it's cyclic. Hexene means there's a double bond. If we call this the number one carbon, then this is the number two carbon, then this would be the number three carbon. So this is the stereo center. Number one carbon, number two carbon, then this is the number three carbon, this is the stereo center. Maybe I'll put in an asterisk to show that's the stereo center. All right, so on the wedge and the dash, one of those is going to be the chlorine, and one is going to be a hidden hydrogen. As usual, when we're working with stereochemistry, we need to draw in the hidden hydrogen, at least when we're, we're learning this material. Now, how do we know what an S would be? Well, we don't. Let's take a guess. Again, we should usually initially guess that the hydrogen is on the dash, just because that's easier to work with. So I've guessed that the hydrogen is on the dash and the chlorine is on the wedge. Now we have to check whether we got that guess correct. Well, let's figure out what is the stereochemistry here. Chlorine gets the number one priority, hydrogen gets the number four priority. The two carbons are tied, but the carbon on the right is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens, while the carbon on the left is attached to two carbons and one hidden hydrogen, two carbons and one hidden hydrogen. So this list on the left is better. So the left-hand group gets the number two priority, and the right-hand group gets the number three priority. There's no need to make any swaps to figure out the configuration because we put the number four pointing away from us. So one to two to three here is arranged counterclockwise, which is S. And that's what we were hoping for. We were trying to draw an S. So it turns out that when we made our guess, it really wasn't S. So we're done. We don't need to make any modifications. This is the drawing of S3-chlorocyclohexene. So here's our drawing. Again, your picture might look different, but still be correct. So if your picture looks different, the way to test whether it's correct is to actually figure out whether you've drawn an R or an S stereocin. Now the molecule we're considering is R, one chloro, one iodo, ethane. Again, that molecule is R, one chloro, one iodo, ethane. Try drawing that molecule. There's many different ways to draw it. Here's one way. Ethane has two carbons. So I've drawn the two carbons, and I've drawn the chlorine. So what do I have left? I have to put in the iodine and the hydrogen. I've got a wedge and a dash. One of those is going to be the iodine, and one is going to be the hydrogen. Well, let's put the hydrogen on the dash, just as a guess. It's always easiest to guess that the hydrogen is on the dash, so we'll put an iodine on the wedge. Now, we don't really know whether this is R or not. We have to check it. So let's figure out what this configuration is. Iodine gets the number one priority, chlorine gets the number two, carbon gets the number three, hydrogen gets the number four. We purposely put the number four pointing away from us, so there's a simple one-step method for determining what this configuration is. This is a counterclockwise, or S, configuration. So, the way we've drawn the molecule, it came out to be S. But that's not what we wanted. We were planning to get an R. Well, that doesn't, that's no big disaster. It's perfectly okay. It just turns out that our initial guess didn't turn out to give us an R. How can we change this so it will be an R? Well, we just use the single swap rule. We can swap any two groups, and that will give us an R configuration. I think the most intuitive groups to swap are the iodine and the hydrogen. So, if you keep the picture like this, it would be wrong, because it would be S. So, let's swap the iodine and the hydrogen.
We just swapped the iodine and the hydrogen, so we know that now the configuration is no longer S. Now this drawing is showing an R configuration. But that's what we want. So this must be the correct configuration of R, one chloro, one iodo, ethane. As I've been saying, uh, your picture might look different from this and still be correct. So if your picture looks different, uh, which it probably does, you just have to now buckle down and check to see whether you've correctly gotten an R stereocenter. Draw this molecule. Octane has eight carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then finding the number four carbon, one, two, three, four. You can put a wedge and a dash on that. What are we going to put on the wedge and the dash? Well, on one of them we're going to put the bromine, and on one of them we're going to put the methyl group. How do we know where to put each one? Well, just take a guess. Um, it's probably best if you guess that you're going to put the methyl group on the dash, Because I think you can see that the methyl group is going to end up being the lowest priority. It's usually easiest if you guess that the lowest priority is going to be pointing away from you. You don't have to do it that way, um, but it's easiest if you guess that the methyl group is going to be pointing away from you. So here would be the bromine. Now we don't really know yet whether this is X. We have to check. Bromine gets the number one priority, and then there's a three-way tie between the carbons. On the top here, on the dash, the carbon is attached to a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. This carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. And on the right, we're attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. Well, this carbon on the, uh, this methyl group on the dash does end up getting the number four priority. Of course, we were already expecting it to get the number four priority. That's why we thought it would be convenient to guess that that was on the dash. We have to move these dots further out. But we're tied again. Still a tie, so we move the dots out again. And now we can see that the list on the right is superior to the list on the left. So this right hand group gets the number two priority, and the left hand group gets the number three priority. Now, we purposely put the number four priority on the dash, so we have a simple one-step method. On the page, the configuration here is clockwise, which is R. So this has an R configuration. But that's not what we wanted. Um, we wanted it to come out to be an X, so it turns out that our guess was incorrect. Well, that's no problem. If we just make a single swap, this will be an X. So let's swap the bromine in the method. You can make any swap you want, but it's easiest to swap the bromine and the methyl. And now that we've made the swap, we must have changed from an R to an S because that's the way the single swap mode works. So this is the correct way to draw S for bromo for methyl octane. If your picture looks different than this, your picture might still be correct, uh, as I've already mentioned. So um, you need, if your picture looks different, you need to actually figure out, um, using the skills from the earlier videos, whether you've drawn an R or an X. And then you can tell whether you've got the right picture. So now um, we've learned two different things in these videos. Uh, first of all, we learned if you're given a drawing, we've learned how to determine whether it's R or S. And now we've learned how to go in reverse. If you're given the name, if you're told whether it's R or S, we've learned how to draw it correctly. And the trick is basically we just take a guess as to what the drawing should look like, and then we check it. And if it turns out that the guess was wrong, we just make a single swap, and then it'll be correct. So this is another example of how useful the single swap rule is in stereochemistry. Uh, there's many examples in organic chemistry of the usefulness of that single swap rule, and here we've seen one of them.